Hi, my name is Bill Yassis, and I was lucky enough to be the pastry chef for two presidents, George W. Bush and Barack Obama. And today we're going to be making a coconut cake that was one of Mrs. Bush's favorite cakes. I was chosen first by Mrs. Laura Bush, who hired me in 2007. And what a great honor and privilege it was to walk into that house every day, this historic mansion, this symbol of democracy. Mrs. Bush, as you probably know, is the very embodiment of Southern hospitality, kindness, generosity. She didn't want the White House to seem like an institution, this august location that their, the guests were coming to. She wanted it to feel like a home. And for that reason, she would introduce very kind of homey style desserts. So you start out with, like most good cakes, butter and sugar. You're gonna put the butter into your electric mixer. But before I do that, I'm gonna heat it up a little bit in the microwave, not to melt it, but just to make it soft. Mrs. Bush gave me the recipe. When she was giving me this recipe, she turned to an aide and said, this is Weiss's cake. Mrs. Weiss was a friend of the Bushes, and she had, Mrs. Weiss had given this recipe to him. So I understood her to say, this is Wheezy's cake, which I thought was like one of the seven dwarfs, or I don't know what I thought, but you know, you're always a little bit nervous in the presence of the first lady. I kept calling it Wheezy's cake until much later when I saw it, when I met Mrs. Weiss and <laughs> learned that this was actually her cake. Here we go. Butter goes into the mixer and the sugar. Now we're gonna put it onto the electric mixer. This will run for about 10 minutes, so you can really introduce a lot of air and makes for a very fluffy cake. The sugar acts actually like little knives that are cutting through the butter and introducing air into the recipe. It's one of the secrets of this kind of a cake, chiffon cake. We're looking for this butter to become fluffier and fluffier which also means the color is going to change. It becomes whiter and whiter. French bakers would call that blanching the butter. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add eggs one by one because we want the eggs to be incorporated into this mixture and emulsify as they go along. You can see how fluffy this batter is right now. And this is, I think, one of the reasons that this is my absolute favorite cake. I worked in France. I worked all over the world. <laughs> This is still my favorite cake. You'll notice that I have the really cool eagle emblem on this jacket. I'm very proud to wear these jackets because they were actually provided for us by the Navy. So when you work at the White House, you're actually an employee of the Department of Defense and you have a lot of interaction with the armed services, which I gained much new admiration for from working with uh, all five branches, including the Coast Guard. The thing that made it easy working there was if you had a really big event, say the next day, and you didn't have much time to prepare, you were able to call on Navy chefs to come help you. <laughs> so you were actually calling the US Navy <laughs> to come help you cook a dinner for 400 or whatever came about. One of the tricks about chiffon cakes is that when you get to this point, you add dry and wet alternately. You want to build up the structure of the cake little by little. So here I've measured the flour, the salt, and the baking powder, and we're gonna sift them together to be sure it's distributed evenly throughout. This cake was served throughout the year, but its, it's real sort of star turn was at the Christmas time, where at the White House, we serve about 20,000 people in three weeks. And so this cake was a centerpiece of the buffet for the Bush's Christmas parties. The Christmas buffet was a really extraordinary display of every kind of dessert. All of this spread out on a beautiful red tablecloth celebrating Christmas. This is John, my assistant. He's gonna help me make this cake. Normally in a bakery, it takes two hands, one to pour in the flour, the other to mix. Go a little faster. So this is a key part of the recipe. Once the flour is in, you don't wanna overmix. The point is you don't want to develop the gluten, which makes the cake tough. So the next step is we take the batter out of the bowl and we put it into our cake pan. Making this cake reminds me of Mrs. Bush and her incredible attention to detail. And an example of that was, so I'm a professional baker. I'm used to putting my 
cakes on cardboard or on some kind of a platter that is used for moving cakes around in a bakery. The first thing she said was, don't use those cardboards. I want the cake to be on a plate or a platter itself the way they would see it in their home. That shows you to what extent she was thinking about making people feel at home. So once this is all evened out, I'm gonna bake it at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. And now we're gonna wait for this to cool. President Bush really loved desserts. I had kind of a special relationship because of that. And he used to tell me, you're the reason that I have to exercise so much, which I took as a compliment. <laughs> the next step is to cut off the surface of this cake. We take these crumbs and dry them out and it makes a nice decoration for the outside of a cake. Making this cake uh, reminds me of a very endearing story about the couple, George and Laura Bush. This was a, uh, a moment during um, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's state dinner in 2007. So at the um, the introductory ceremony, which takes place on the South Lawn, there's like a 21-gun salute, there's a military parade, and President Bush was introducing Her Majesty, and he slipped and said her last visit here was in 1776. She didn't say a word, being Her Majesty. <laughs> she just gave him a look. He stopped, looked at her, and said, that's a look that only a mother could give. And she referenced that little faux pas in her speech at the state dinner. But you can imagine that, you know, not only is this the President of the United States and the head of state of Great Britain, um, but these are people. These are people who, you know, a couple who wants to invite people into their home and, and make a wonderful experience for them, not only for the principal, but for their friends, their associates, etc. So everything had to be perfect. The final moment when the president and first lady say goodbye to the monarch takes place on the North Portico. I happen to be in a small office to the side of that grand foyer and all of a sudden the door opens and Mrs. Bush enters. She had this beautiful Oscar de la Renta gown blue gown with a little bit of a trail. But in that moment, because it was a small space, uh, the president stepped on the train of Mrs. Bush's dress. And I saw her go kind of like that. They both burst out laughing with so much relief in their voice and such a feeling of, you know, we did it, we're a team, it's okay if you stepped on the dress, it's over now anyway. To me, that was just such a wonderful moment showing their love for one another and their ability to laugh off these little sort of mistakes that happen. The next step is we cut horizontal layers of the cake. And from each, we're going to cut two circles. Should give us a nice tall cake. So we're going to take each layer of the coconut cake and then I soak it with this mixture of coconut milk. So it's going to really deepen that flavor. I'm going to put a scoop of this pastry cream over here. It's basically vanilla pudding. So nice creamy filling and then the next layer and the next and the next, etc. Once all the layers are completed, then we'll put it in the refrigerator for 10 to 20 minutes. My favorite part of the coconut cake is the frosting called seven minute frosting. And basically it's egg whites and sugar heated over a double boiler. The reason you heat it is the egg whites have to be semi-cooked or they won't really hold. The important thing is to remember you wanna hit 131 degrees Fahrenheit. That way the egg whites won't melt off your cake after you get started. So here we go. We have our egg whites. Now we're gonna add our powdered sugar. It seems like a lot, but you need that much. And it's all gonna dissolve into these egg whites. So we let the water go down to a simmer. We don't want to make an omelet. We just want to warm it up. And away we go. This recipe for this uh, frosting is a perfect example of hominess at the White House. It's really a home type recipe. Even the name, seven minute frosting, that's not very precise for a baker uh, to know, well, seven minutes at what temperature? What does that mean? 
we prefer to have the temperature knowing it's 131 Fahrenheit. Once we have the temperature that we want, we're gonna pour it into our electric mixer. And here it's important to turn the machine on quickly so that it doesn't sit with that heat because then the eggs can cook on their own. You can see how hot they are from the steam. But now we're gonna just let this cool down in the mixer and you'll see a miraculous transformation. So after it cools down in the mixer, you have this beautiful consistency. When you bite into it, it kind of gives a little bit. It's a meringue, but it's almost chewy. That's the secret of making sure that you have heated the egg whites to the right temperature. One thing to remember is it's extremely sticky. If it gets anywhere near you, it's gonna stick to you. So that's why I like to use the pastry bag. It kind of keeps your hands clean and you can apply it. We'll start with the side, maybe. That's a good way to, to begin. So making this cake uh, reminds me of uh, working for Mrs. Bush and her husband, the president. It just reminds me of what genuine, natural, kind people they were and uh, truly the embodiment of Southern hospitality. And one of the ways you know that people are, are genuine in that way is that all the people that work for them too fit into that mold. It was a pleasure to work with them and their entire team. Everybody was very kind to one another and I'm happy to remember that. This is the pastry version of that feeling.